Greetings, welcome back. Uh, this time I want to look at an old theorem of Fermat's, namely that uh, any prime of the form 4n plus 1 can be written as the sum of two squares. For example, 13 is 9 plus 4, 17, 16 plus 1, 29 is 25 plus 4. That's pretty amazing. Uh, primes of the form 4n plus 3 don't work. For example, you can't write 7 as the sum of two squares. Fermat presented this uh, as a fact, but it was really a conjecture and the proof had to wait for Euler. Okay, first a little recap of what we did earlier for the 3n plus 1 circuit problem. Suppose we have a circuit of length k that starts with x odd numbers. Uh, the bottom member of this circuit takes the form 3 to the x minus 2 to the x over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. And we showed that's never an integer, no matter what x and k are. And while we were doing that, we got interested in whether the denominator had some factor, say 13, that the numerator didn't have. In that case, the denominator couldn't divide the numerator evenly, and this ratio wouldn't be an integer. So for example, when is 3 to the x minus 2 to the x divisible by 13? So we wrote out the remainders of 2 to the x when divided by 13 for various x. And here are the remainders of 3 to the x when divided by 13. And when the remainders are the same, we know that 3 to the x minus 2 to the x is divisible by 13. So that happens when x is 4, a, 12, and so on. Now, in this row for 2 to the x mod 13, you can see that every number between 1 and 12 is represented. That means 2 is a primitive root of 13. 3 is not a primitive root of 13, and you can see that the remainders are limited to just 1, 3, and 9. Okay, but for this theorem of Fermat's, we want to look at the remainders of x squared when we divide by 13 instead of 2 to the x. So we get a very different looking pattern now. For one thing, the remainders of 1 squared through 6 squared are mirrored in the remainders of 7 squared through 12 squared. And that makes sense. So let's compare the remainder of x squared with the remainder of 13 minus x squared, which is this. And since the first two terms are evenly divisible by 13, the overall remainder is the same as x squared's remainder. So there are six distinct remainders here, and we can call them squares, mod 13. So 4 is a square of 2, and 10 is a square of 6, and so on. So how do we know which six numbers are lucky enough to be squares? Well, let's go back and look at 2 to the x mod 13, or any primitive root. Well, we know that 2 squared is a square, and we know that 2 to the 4th is a square, because it's 2 to the squared squared. And so every uh, 2 to the x where x is even. So those are exactly the lucky numbers we see in the x squared remainder row. And not only that, but these squares come in pairs, six apart. So 4 plus 9 is 13, 3 plus 10 is 13, and 12 plus 1 is 13. That means we can express the prime 13 as a sum of two squares, which is Fermat's theorem, and we can do it in three different ways. But oops, actually we found three cases where a sum of squares equals some multiple of 13, because we were working mod 13. So only in the first case do we have two squares that, whose sum actually equals 13 itself. So we need to show that when we pair up the squares down here, one pair is going to involve very small x's so that we can add uh, their squares to 13 or whatever prime we're working with. I thought about that for a while, but finally couldn't come up with anything. So I went to Wikipedia to spy for a clue. And the first thing I read was that Euler spent two years proving this theorem of Fermat's. What? Two years for Euler is like 20 years for a dog, so forget it. But at least we got a nice basic understanding of the remainders of x squared divided by p and how they work, and that should come in handy. By the way, this pairing up of even x's only works if p is of the form 4m plus 1, like 13 or 17 or 29. That's why Fermat's theorem is limited to those kinds of primes. If you are interested in a visual proof of Fermat's theorem, there's a good video out there. I'll put a link in the distribution. Uh, okay, see you next time.